Hello, welcome to Train Signal. This is Introduction to the VNX series. So before we get started, you know, we've we've gone over a little bit of of what's common in most storage environments. So I, I hope that's given you kind of a, a a baseline of where this course is heading. But that was purely a baseline. So now we're getting into the VNX itself, which is the the essence, the root of where this course is going. But I wanted to give, like anything in life, when you know your history, you know where things come from, you can kind of maybe understand where they're heading. The VNX itself was really the fifth generation of mid-range arrays from EMC. Now, I, I put a note in there, the FC series, which encompassed the 4500 and the 4700, were released between 1999 and 2001 in this timeline. Now, in 1999, uh, EMC purchased the Clarion line from Data General. They were based out of Apex, North Carolina, and they acquired that technology from them. Between 99 and 2001, they came out with the FC 4500 and the 4700. Now, the 4700 in general was, I don't know about the 45, but the 4700 was a huge purple array. It was hideous, absolutely hideous. But it's where I cut my teeth, and that's how long I've been working with, uh, with with these arrays themselves. It was back in that, right around the 2000 range, that I started working with the 4700. Now, soon after that, about a year, they came out with the CX200, 400, and 600. And this was really their branding, EMC's branding of the Clarion technology itself as they saw it. What changes occurred when Data General owned it, when the FC series came out, and when the 200, 400, and 600 came out? I can't answer that. I'm not sure all the, the different features and the modifications that were made once EMC got their hands on it. But that was the first, really the first introduction to market of the Clarion line as we know it. And that was over, you know, from 2001 all the way up to 2011. That encompassed the Clarion line itself. So when you, you know, most people know what a Clarion array is. It was really up until the VNX, which was in 2011, where the name changed. As far as I'm concerned, the same underlying technology, a lot of the bus structures, it went from fiber channel to SAS, there was a lot of other key things that changed with the line, but it was still a clear delineation between the file side, uh, what we call data movers, DART was in the previous uh, NS line, and the, you know, the block side. So, Right around 2003, and you, you'll notice the, the time difference here. You'll notice this across the board. So a couple years between 99 and 2001, a couple years between 2001 and 2003, two or three years between the, you know, the rest of these entries here. That's about the release cycle for EMC's mid-range array. 2003, CX-300, 500, and 700 introduced. And then the AX was introduced. It was kind of a low entry point into the uh, into this space. This would be, you know, essentially the predecessor to the VNXE. Then in 2006, you had the CX3 line, so the 10, 20, 40, and the 80. And then 2008 was a CX4, 120, 240, 480, and 960. I always loved this line. I always loved the CX4 simply because it made my life easier actually knowing what the max discounts were in the array itself. CX4, 120, 120 discs max for that array itself. Every other line, every other model of Clarion VNX, uh, not so distinguishable within the name itself. Miss that. If you're listening, EMC, I miss that. As history progressed, features were added. Now, the great thing about EMC, and, and they do a great, great job with acquisitions. And the reason they do is because they take risks and they and they foresee where things are going. I, I, I don't know, I'm not sure if you know they have a crystal ball or, or something where they can actually see the future, but they know what's going to be hot. And they're so big, I guess, nowadays where they can just kind of, uh, they can almost dictate what the future is going to be because they are so large. But over, you know, over time, each generation, you know, from the, from the CX all the way up to the VNX itself, features were added that were just not mainstream at the time. These are things like fiber channel and ASCII connectivity in the same array. It just wasn't wasn't common at the time. SATA disks, you know, certainly not common at the time. And now, you know, within the VNX, you can now mix, you know, SAS since it is a SAS backend bus now. Uh, you're mixing SAS, you're mixing nearline SAS, you're mi mixing flash drives. You have all these mixing of different different drive types that just was not common when this first hit the market. Varying levels of RAID technology, that was not common either. You know, typically it had one, maybe two, in early on in mid-range arrays. 
raid levels. You know, maybe it had uh, raid one or and raid five. Now it's progressed. It's grown even more. I mean, the the VNX itself has raid zero, has raid one, three, five, six, one plus zero. I mean, it's it's got a whole gamut of different raid technologies that that you're able to utilize depending on your use case. I mean, it's very important you know what type of I.O. is going to be written to this, uh, or the, the I.O. footprint, I guess is a better way to put that, is going to be written to the disk that you're allocating. That's important for you to know so you can determine what, what type of RAID technology best fits that I.O. profile. Active passive head design. That was just not common at the time. And what active passive head design, and in, in, if I could summarize, in kind of a couple sentences, what it actually means is that if you have a LUN, you have a logical unit, uh, that raw LUN you're allocating to your host so that host can write some data to it. Okay, With an active passive head design, that LUN is either owned by one storage processor or the other. We talked a little bit about SPs. So the LUN itself is actually owned by one head or the other, one SP or the other. And data therefore is uh, the I.O. path is therefore uh, active between one head or the other at one given time. Now, if you were to lose a head, that LUN would fail over to the surviving head. But I.O. was only traversing one head at a time. That's active passive head design. Okay. Now, a Lua, asymmetric logical unit access, puts this a little twist on this active passive head design. And you'll actually see... EMC say the VNX itself is an active active array. It's an asymmetric active active array. It's not a symmetric active active array like the symmetrics or the VMAX. But, you know, it's hard for me to really make sense of this because, uh, you know, Lua does change the game a little bit, but to me, it's still an active passive head design. The ownership is still to one head or the other. Also, pluggable I.O. architecture, you know, some of the later models. This gives you the ability to buy what you need as far as I.O. modules, so your, uh, your fiber channel modules, your iSCSI modules. Buy what you need day one. If you need to expand later, you add in a, a hot pluggable mo module. Simple as that. You grow into the array. You're buying things over time as you need that technology and, and capability. And then flash drive support. Huge flash drives in general are just becoming a huge beneficial uh, technology to the industry, and it's really changing things uh, dramatically. EMC was one of the first, if not the first, to introduce flash in their mid-range array. Now, in 2011, the year of the, the VNX, you know, this is when the CX-5, quote unquote, the CX-5 came out. This is the VNX. They introduced the VNX 5100, 5300, 55, 57, and 7500. So they introduced essentially five new arrays to market. Now the biggest changes and, and kind of some things that I, that I put here in these, these couple bullet points was a SAS backend bus. So you're moving from a 4 gig uh, fiber channel backend bus with the CX4. Might have been 8. It's 4 or 8. And you're moving that to a 6 gig SAS bus. Now with the SAS bus it's really four channels is how they explain it, it's how EMC explains it. It's four channels so four times six it's really 24 gigabit of highway to move around you know between the storage processors themselves and the back-end uh, DAEs. So it's all utilizing the SAS back-end bus. Extremely more expandable and scalable than the original fiber channel bus which was using basically an arbitrated loop type technology uh, for back-end communications. In the CX-5, the 3.5 and the 2.5 disk form factors now can exist in the same array. So why would you want to go with a, a smaller disk form factor? Well, now I can cram more disks into the array. So my DAEs traditionally, my disk array enclosures traditionally only held 15 disks. Now they've added these two and two and a half inch uh, disk form factor DAEs and now I can put up to 25 in a single DAE and even in some cases I could put up to 60 in a, in a DAE so they it, it's really expandable really scalable from the fact that now you have these smaller disks and now you have more capacity that you can throw into the VNX themselves also speeds and fees you know more cash more front imports faster processors you'll see on 
some of the forthcoming slides, uh, how all that breaks down between the different models. And another major selling point is these software suites that were introduced. So these are these are consumable or very consumable ways to uh, to buy software on the VNX itself. So instead of going down a, a laundry list of all the different features uh, and technologies available on the VNX itself, they're now grouped together based on application protection or based on remote replication or based on local replication. They're all put into these suites and then even on top of the suites you can do what's uh, these, these two packs. So you can do a total efficiency pack or a total protection pack. So it really made you know consuming software extremely easy in 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 comparison to times past. And we'll go over what's in those suites and what's in the protection packs and efficiency packs.